We're covering hot topics of the week. I've got the homegirl, Lady J. That is going to be her internet name. We're covering <laughs> R. Kelly and the PP tape. We're covering teachers going on strike in North Carolina. And lastly, what is going on with all these black people being harassed? In particular, we're covering the lady from Yale. Let's do it. What's good, YouTube? Y'all know who it is, the Sexy as Hell host. We've got ourselves a special guest. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe to my channel. Leave me some comments on how you feel about some of these hot topics because we're doing a little life gain entertainment today because we want to break some of that hate in your heart. We're sick of the hate. Hate's got to go. It's got to go. So Jasmine, which one? Well, let's, let's go ahead and do the issues with black people first. Have you seen where all these black people have been harassed? You had the issue with Starbucks and the latest one this week was the black lady at Yale and we've got yeah. a clip we're going to go over it in a second but just what are your initial thoughts about what's been going on? My initial thoughts are this just boils down to white people having a problem with black people occupying what they feel to be white spaces. If a black person is in an environment where a white person doesn't assume that they belong they use the police as a way to weaponize against us because they mm -hmm. know that the police will come and more than likely take their side. Okay. So it's just a really frustrating issue and I don't know, we can get into the video. And talk All right, about it. let's go ahead and take a look at this video. But before we do that, let me put on my plus seven glasses of the sexy as hell and work on skilling up my craft a little bit, <laughs> giving y'all a better YouTube experience and something better to look at. Now let's take a look at this clip. Damn, and, black uh, people can't even sleep in college no more. Sort of can't even be in college. Now, uh, the graduate student here is Volade Cianbola, and uh, she is an incredibly accomplished woman. Again, she's a graduate student at Yale, where it costs as much as $63,000 a year just to get an education there in, in its graduate schools. Um, she took a nap in the common area, and then this uh, white student comes in, tells her she's not authorized to be there, calls the cops, and unfortunately, uh, the situation escalates from there. Uh, she had to deal with the cops for as long as 15 minutes. And we have a few examples of the video that she posted on social media. So let's take a look at the first one. I have absolute right to document. I'm taking your picture. This is, this is Facebook Live. Oh, that's the chick. That call, yeah. After seeing that chaos, that that, what is your opinion of what happened in that situation? You know, it's just I just have such a level of frustration because I feel like this is something that white people don't come up in the world having to learn how to do. Are you talking about white privilege? I'm. I am talking about white privilege. No. People, yes, no. No. Yes. I li <laughs> Wait a minute. I listened to Sean Hannity yesterday, and he said white privilege is the same thing as Santa Claus. Um, that's because Sean Hannity doesn't understand common sense. White privilege, we're not d talking about the fact that people's families had to work hard. We're not talking about the fact that maybe you grew up poor. You just have a privilege of living in a society that was built for you, that was not built for non-white persons. And that they, is all that we're saying. And they get the benefit of the doubt. Usually. Exactly. They that's usually get the benefit of the doubt. And the police are, obviously, it's not even so much that they were hassling her or whatever. It's just an inconvenience because I shouldn't have to deal with that to begin with. Right. So uh, um, upon further investigation, the chick that called the police on her, mm -hmm. there was an article written where she has harassed 
numerous black students I don't to the it. tune of kicking them out of the, the little dormitory area to calling police in the past what? on them. And so with this particular situation, you know, she was frustrated and felt like showing her key should have been enough to get them to go away. I kind of feel like in this situation, you shouldn't have been inconvenienced, first of all. She shouldn't have been. But at the end of the day, just show, show, them, your, ID. show your ID, let them go back. Show your business. ID and let it go. Then if it was me, I would have went down there and cussed out that chick for calling right. the police exactly. on me. Right, exactly. Then so, you file a complaint. Right, then so you, you file have a complaint. A, right, so that would have been the right thing to do. And, so. I, and yeah, you know, I agree with that. I do agree with and that. And then to summarize all this, I blame all this on our president. He's setting a tone and a narrative for people that would normally keep these type of behaviors suppressed, he's making them feel emboldened to bring that shit out. Mm -hmm. Can't we all just get along? Apparently not. No, not we can't. Brown. Subject number two. <laughs> we have a recording artist that made a PP tape a couple <laughs> of years ago. And I seen the tape, and boy, he was putting in some work. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, boy, the most of the You ocean. are so, oh God, okay. And, and then he ended it all with a golden shower, boy. I am talking Quite about disgusting. R. Kelly. Mm. And he's in the news this week because there are people protesting him and some of his tour venues. He's even been kicked out of some tour venues. And Spotify yeah. pulled him from their reviews and from their service because He's under some investigation about abusing women. They ain't got nothing to do with the PP tape. That's just old. But right now he's being a, under investigation for abusing some women. And I've got that footage too. You ready to see it? I'm ready to see it. Let's take a look at it. They look like the R. Kelly type too. <laughs> I don't know if I believe that. November 2011 and spent two years there. Mm. But Kitty says the relationship became violent within weeks of her arrival. Oh, okay. She shared details of her time with R. Kelly in her book, I Was Somebody Before This. Welcome to you both. What a title, Kitty. What a title. So you were in that home for two years. Um, within three weeks, he became physically abusive. It was actually Atlanta, uh, Chicago, not Atlanta. Um, about two weeks after I moved in, um, I had confronted him about a videotape that I saw, and it was a girl he had introduced me to, mm -hmm. and, um, that was the first time he became abusive, because I noticed that the girl in the tape was someone that he had gone to court for, and he had introduced me to her, and I didn't know how to handle the information that I just... Just to be clear, he went to court um, on child pornography charges for a sex tape he was in. The yes. prosecutors alleged he was having sex with a 14-year-old. He was acquitted because the jury said, we can't identify that woman, and so we don't know whether she was 14. Hmm. They didn't think they could prove it was a child. Right. And you, you know this girl, and he introduced me to her. Um, and this is 2011, so years had gone by, and this person's an older woman now, but when I saw the videotape, I realized... That was the same girl he had introduced me to. So, oh. and how old did he was she was in that sex tape? Um, when I did the math compared to how old she was when he introduced her to me, she it landed on fourteen. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. I don't see nothing wrong. <laughs> you don't see nothing wrong after listening to that. Well, 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 Mr. Bump and Grind. Do you feel like what's going on with him right now is relevant? Do you feel because he hasn't he hasn't had to serve time and he hasn't been um, proven in a court of law that he's done these things that these women are accusing him of? So do you feel like the response from Spotify was right? You know, I feel like Spotify is going to respond to their consumer base. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, there's uh, been a lot of traction around the Me Too movement. Exactly. And this is not something that I think can be taken lightly by any corporation because they will see a massive um, kind of fleeing if they choose to ignore so many women that are saying we need to speak out about this abuse that's right. ongoing. Um, so, you know, just for example, like with Bill Cosby, I mean, something was going to have to happen, even if, you know, while the court proceedings and all those things were taking place, there were women who were coming out saying like, but we have to stop 
making excuses for these men who are doing these things. So regardless of what happens with R. Kelly, I mm -hmm. think that Spotify was going to respond to their consumers. So I, I can't necessarily say that they were wrong. If they wouldn't have done something, they they would have lost a lot of a yeah. lot of um, a lot of fans. So yeah, I, you know, um, some sometimes perception can become the reality, rightly or wrongly. Yep. And right. uh, because R. Kelly is a repeat offender, uh -huh. had this been maybe the first accusation brought right. against him, right? It, I think it would have been different. It could have been different. Mm -hmm. But we have evidence. I have we do. seen a tape, a whole video tape, a video tape. I, I learned one of my moves <laughs> from R. Kelly, not to pin on people. But I did learn one of my moves from that that tape, and I was just like, "Damn, bro, that that was an educational for me. It wasn't just a a PP tape." Don't. However, you know, you you can't be having these allegations no. and a long history. Not to mention, we know he married Aaliyah, and she was underage. So mm -hmm. the history is there. The Me Too movement is hot. This is just what's going to happen. Part I mean, of the course. Yep. Nowadays, you just got to be extra careful, people, about what you're doing, and you have to. Look at the ramifications of what can happen Absolutely. from your actions, whether they're going to be wrong or right. Mm -hmm. And if you keep a good track record, sometimes you can overcome something that may or may not be true. The last subject we're covering, and this is near and dear to both our hearts, is teachers in North Carolina are going to go on a full day strike. Question to you is, do you think this is going to help improve the environment for people that want to be educational professionals? Um, absolutely. So I think like it's definitely going to take more than just the day. Exactly. Um, I, you know, there, I can't have any sort of false impression that it's just going to be May the 16th and then that solves all of the problems in education. I know that it's so much bigger than that, but I really think like this is probably the first time that I've seen um, since I've lived in North Carolina anything gain as much attention as this has garnered. I think right. at this point, um, I can't remember the statistic offhand, but I think at this point we're looking at at least 50% of the state being on a teacher work day. Um, There's so many counties who have decided we're going to close school for students for the day. Um, and, and uh, you know, teachers are taking that personal day to go to Raleigh. Mm -hmm. It's the day that General Assembly is back in session. And I mean, they want to make a statement. I'm not a teacher. I'm a school counselor, but we want to make a statement. So yeah. I think that it's essential that we do this, but we have to continue after Wednesday. So you need to make appointments with your legislators. You need to make phone calls. You need to be, um, you know, go to like your local school board meetings, participate in local elections, because those are the kinds of things Things that can, that generate movement. This is a catalyst, but we need to like keep it going. Right now, my story with education is one where I started out wanting to go into education back in community college mm -hmm. until this girl says to me, "Why are you gonna be a teacher?" And I said, "Because I think it's something good." She was like, "You ain't gonna get no women." I said, "Why not?" Because you ain't gonna get paid. I immediately changed my field <laughs> and went to the medical field. However, I wound up owning a daycare and learned what goes on in education. And it's absolutely pathetic that in America, teachers are not one of the highest paid professions you can get into. This country reveres people that have financial success, absolutely. right? We put these people on pedestals. Mm -hmm. And the people that are educating the future can't be put on a pedestal? Really? If we want funding to be better, you've got to keep supporting these type of movements. Now, you've got absolutely. a lot of women who just kind of feel like, shut the hell up because they're married to rich guys and that's their financial support and that behooves me because hell they're just working for toenail money you know <laughs> they just working for massage money people who put their life on the line go in their bank bring materials to school mm -hmm. and all this the real role models the real heroes of this country are not getting paid for their efforts and we need to do something about that mm -hmm. and this particular day strike is one thing that i think can make it happen definitely and i and you know i will also say like yeah like I don't think anybody goes into education thinking I'm going to become a millionaire, right? Like from mm -hmm. the very beginning, when I got into this field, I said, I'm not in it for the income. I'm in it for the outcome because I know that I'm going to be pouring into students. But see, somebody would tell you right there, <laughs> there's no need to strike. If, right. I, if yeah. I was if I was a detractor or someone mm -hmm. on the other side, they would mm -hmm. say, well, you need to be satisfied with what you're getting. Right. Shut see, up and don't complain for you're more right. money. And people have said that, but they are missing the point of the movement. This is not just about 
pay that educators are getting because we are aware of that. Mm -hmm. It's about the fact that our government is literally starving our schools. We have trailers that are like totally out of commission, rooms that are getting flooded, there's mold in our classrooms, our mm. air conditioners and our heating systems don't work. Mm. Students are getting nosebleeds because it's too hot in but, the classroom. But wait a minute, Trump just made a huge tax cut. Aren't y'all gonna get some of that tax cut that my president just gave y'all? I'm not sure where that's coming from because it's not hitting the school system. And I can tell you that firsthand. Like oh. this is where we are we are fighting and we are opening our mouths because we want better for our kids. Right. And I feel like any parent who has a student who is in public education should support that because we're part of part of our job description is advocacy. This exactly. is what we do. Yep. We have to be a voice for the voiceless. And we know that, you know, these little kids can't necessarily say, hey, I don't want to go to class today because there's plaster literally falling on my head. Mm -hmm. We have to be the ones to get out there and say, we're demanding better because our students, our future deserve better than what we're giving them. Exactly. And we can do better than this. So yeah. let's do that. And the one thing that scares any government is a mass uprising by the people. That's, That's right. about the only thing they fear short of lobby groups. Mm -hmm. If the people look like they're going to rise up, and not take it because literally if every teacher in America decided they're not going to go to work for a week mm -hmm. things would get done just like it'd be like Thanos snapping his finger with that <laughs> gauntlet on boom <laughs> stuff would dissolve funding would come in so you guys if you're in North Carolina support these teachers cheer them on as they want to make a change for the future and the better education and to have someone like me that's very young that's looking at that thing saying I want to do it but I want a good wife too you know that, that and all that so if that's going to do it for this video, don't forget to like my video, comment and subscribe. Leave me some comments. Do y'all want to see Lady J back up here? How did you enjoy this first experience? I liked YouTube? it. I liked it. This was fun. I'll come back. You want to be a superstar? Oh, I'm already a superstar, but I'll come back and do a guest spot on your video. Well, y'all know there's only one superstar on my channel and that's me, so okay. she might not come back. Until that next Sex is Hell video, I'll see you.